downtown Miami. Gonna park my truck at location for the rest of the week. On the hunt for a place to get breakfast. If I'm thinking of, well, shoot, if we're walking around a little bit. That's wild, man. And then I can also, I can take over focus. Oh, actually, I didn't even have it on. Hold on. We didn't even have autofocus on. There we go. Now it's not. Mm. Like, as soon as you make an input, it'll. Yeah, unlock so, it. not even then. Like, it's just on the focus wheel right here. So, like, yeah. you know. Like, hold your hand out again. Okay, so if I want to focus on you. Oh, I'm just, I see. Crazy. There. If I want to focus on you. You see what I'm doing there? Mm -hmm. the, the lack of stutter or latency is incredible. Oh, to that? On the feed, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, and the, the distance on that monitor and the transmission from here is insane. It's crazy. So. You're just making a case for me having to take a loan out to buy one of these things. <laughs> I'm not buying more equipment. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Does it tell you or? I'll see if the percentage of battery looks full. I'm just curious about how bright it is on the dimmer. Oh, uh, it's at 100. Go like 50. And then is that straight daylight? Uh, yeah, it's at 56. Okay, cool. So yeah, I guess 50%, 56, and then let's do the same thing on this side. And then you have it at 55. Like seeing you guys use it yesterday and just kind of messing around with the monitor, it's like, like we need to go in on this thing together. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it definitely wasn't cheap, but it's pretty rad for what it does. And like, I really like, I, so I bought it because I was going to do a film for, and it's still my, uh, for my brother's band. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be very like, you know, bare bones crew and very run and gun yeah you know and so it's like i'm gonna need this thing like well that's know. what yeah that's what you're thinking because there's like there's just so much built into that where it's like if you buy your own you know camera setup and then another lens and then a gimbal and right. then everything else that comes with this yeah you end up spending it's about more, the same price, yeah. if not more yeah. yeah but i just like the portability literally like between the case that this comes in and then my backpack camera all the lenses i need a drone yeah it's like and then um, like mics just fit in yeah. pockets now so right. it's like yeah yeah pretty cool so once they have the xlr module for this you can do the traveling interview b-roll project with <laughs> so, that's uh, pretty great. It's so sick. If you viewed more than a few of my videos, I know it looks like all I do is shoot multi-camera interviews, 
but it's actually a small slice of the type of production work I do. It's just that this is the only opportunity I have to step back, pull out my phone, and try to capture a little behind the scenes. So we were in Miami for a week and shot a whole series of interviews for an annual show, corporate thing. And we ran three and sometimes four. No, I'm sorry, we ran four cameras for all the interviews. So two people. And you know, we get the opposing, over-the-shoulder close-ups, clean close-ups, and then an A7 as a two-shot locked off, and the Ronin 4D as a slide, kind of bouncing as a profile angle between the subject and the host. For most of these setups, the close-up cams were running 50 mil primes. I believe we're at a 2.0 aperture. And this is the B-roll kit. So in addition to the four cameras for the interview, I also have my Pocket 6K on my Ronin. And I'd run around and shoot some stage shots and B-roll with that kit. Here's an example of the two close-ups. You know, I got to keep uh, kind of our subjects out of my documentation. So excuse the, uh, the head chopped framing. But you can see what a 50 mil of full frame looks like at a 2.0. Get an idea of depth of field and composition. And then just imagine that two shot locked off to complement. And some nice tight uh, 85 mils on the Ronin 4D. Here's the A-cam, wireless video transmitter on both the close-up cams to the Flanders monitor, picture-in-picture. Picture. And then I have the little locket boxes on each camera. And the we did double system record. Actually, let me rethink this. I don't recall if we actually recorded in Mixer. I think we just fed direct to camera A-cam. And then I had on camera mics on all the other cameras plus time code jam where possible. And then we clapped the time code slate one roll for each interview, one long continuous roll. So post only has to synchronize one time per subject. This was a quick turn. I think they were starting the edit on uh, day, the following day after each shoot day and doing sub clipping and cutting on site as we progressed. So this show was six weeks ago from real time. I'm actually on another show right now. I'm traveling all over the country shooting 90 second packages and that Ronin 4D would be the perfect tool for the current job. So maybe next year I will pick one up. I know I said it earlier, I'm not buying any more kit. But uh, having worked through this show and now this one I'm on now, where I'm running with the Pocket 6K on the Ronin, and I just shot my first package in Salt Lake City, Utah. I got home late, uh, 2 a.m. today actually, same day really difficult to look at the and hold composition and focus on the pocket 6k of shooting outdoors and up on a mountain and that ronin 4d where you can f compose the frame and then tell it to hold that composition on the subject and track focus in high speed would just be new level of slick past two and a half years these corporate office campuses are all about the same you got a handful of people in the facility it's great for filmmaking because you have free reign, um, but it's also kind of difficult because all your shots are like these expansive spaces with no background action. I am most likely going to pick up an FX3 to do what you see here, third angle lock off, and probably an E-mount 85 mil prime to complement my 50 mil E-mount. I like them for the autofocus on interviews and the airline travel jobs because they're much lighter than my PL glass. Jumping back to real time, I have purchased some additional items. I don't want to make this a gear channel. My focus is more about what it's like surviving as a independent or freelancer in the media business. However, I will go through the new kit in an upcoming video as it applies to the next project. The LED panel on the double C stand arm. I'm sure this makes every career grip cringe, but <laughs> gotta work with what I got. It was reasonably safe. So hanging out at the hotel lounge each night, we had awesome dinners in downtown Miami. Thank you to my producer and director team for taking really good care of me. We had a few people drop from the schedule and as a result we wrapped the day early and it was fortunate timing because a tropical storm was rolling into South Florida. So I bailed a day early at the beginning of the storm. The rest of the team stayed behind. Yeah, I've been there. 
my wife came along for this trip and we extended our trip home and made it a little mini vacation. Visited some friends up in the Crystal River area of Florida on the Gulf Coast and then we spent a day and a night in Gulf Shores, Alabama. I have an intense travel schedule the next several weeks. I have several shoot days where we jump on an airplane after wrap and red eye to the next. So I may fall behind on publishing, but I'm out there accumulating content. I should have a library of new footage in the coming weeks.